All righty, everybody, welcome to The Safe Haven. I'm your host, DC, accompanied with Dumbledore right now. We have our guest, Chrome, from BMW. All right, so you guys, I want to let everybody know that nothing here is financial advice. Everything that is said here is so you can get a more in-depth understanding of the team, the person behind the team, the community, and the project itself to help you make the best investment decision possible. Always do your own research. And once again, this is not financial advice. Without further ado, Chromed, what is up? What brought you into this space? Most certainly. So I started in crypto actually about seven years ago. I started by mining Zcash, which is kind of crazy. That was how I began my journey in crypto. And as we've moved forward, I, I got into technical analysis and whatnot. I was a trader. And then in the last couple of years, one of my friends brought me into BSC. I took great interest in it. I began learning about trading in BSC, uh, the farms and the different staking pools, et cetera. On PancakeSwap, I took a lot of interest in that, dabbled in that for a little bit. And then for my career, I'm actually a social media marketer. I own an agency alongside a couple other different firms. And I figured, well, there's a, there's a massive need for cryptocurrency marketing. Let me get into that. And then through that, I got into development and whatnot as well. And that's kind of where we've landed now. And beyond me, we also have other members on our team, such as It's MK Bruv, who he will probably be here pretty soon. He's our core marketer on the team. He does a phenomenal job. He's in France. We have other individuals that spread across the world. We have an international team in Asia and whatnot is where our web developer is. Also one of our networkers. He is also in Asia as well, FM, if you guys are familiar with him, he's connected with us with everyone from CeeLo. He's connected us to pretty much everyone in the space, Brothers Marketing as well. We are working with them. We're partnered with them as well. So we're connected with a great, great deal of um, individuals. And for BMW Inu, we landed here as the Binance Smart Chain and BMW actually formed a little bit of a partnership for the rewards program. So we figured let's capitalize on this opportunity. And as we move forward here, we're going to develop a lot of utilities that are going to kind of support the community and push us forward. That's what's up, man. Seems you guys got a lot of stuff lined up. All right. And what made you want to create this project in particular? Uh, when I saw the news about BMW, and I love cars as well. I'm a bit of a car enthusiast, I'd argue. And to see that, and I was like, oh, well, I should capitalize on this opportunity. And I figured, well, I have a team who's fantastic as well. So let's work together. And everyone was down. So we, we, click, we quickly got the project together and launched it. And obviously, it's, it's done pretty fantastic so far. It's, it's over 300x from launch, which is fantastic. And as we move forward here, too, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to deliver. But I, I really wanted to create something special. And I always look at BSC and I say, well, the space could use some improvement. And I want to be at the forefront of that. So we're, we always aim to give people a safe place to kind of invest their money, regardless of their investment objectives. I, I think BMW serves a purpose for everybody, whether that's someone who's looking for the payment technology that we have to offer, which I can talk a little bit more about later, whether that's they want to be in a great community token as BMW has a phenomenal community, or whether you're a car enthusiast, P2E gaming enthusiast, we offer a lot of things and we're going to continue to develop utilities that kind of reach every aspect of the space. That's what's up, man. I like that. All right. Next question I want to ask, because, you know, over here at the Safe Haven, I like to I like to give the people here a little feel for the person behind the project's character, you know, because projects fail from behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? So 100%. one thing I want to know is why should you be the person who makes a project? Why are you fit for owning a project? I would say I'm fit for owning a project as there are a couple of values that are at the forefront of my mind in, in general and kind of my life value, like my personal values that I carry and, and are very close to my heart. Integrity is one of them. Passion, enthusiasm, and curiosity. Those are some of the values at the forefront of my, you know, my personal beliefs. And in terms of integrity with the project, you know, we're KYC, we're audited. That's always, that's, a, that's critical. We're through crypt audit. And we're going to continue to kind of expand our audits as well as time goes on. So that's always at the forefront of my mind is, is being safe for people, especially in this space with a lot of scams. I want people to feel safe as an individual as well. I'm curious. I'm always looking to see what's best. I want to be, I want to be able to take constructive feedback. So I always ask the community, what can I do better? Where, what do you want to see? And I want to implement those things. So when people said, oh, I, I'd like some other utilities, what did we do? We implemented the payment technology, right? And that wasn't even on that. It wasn't even on the roadmap. That was something I took out of 
my personal funds. I've thrown around 20 BNB so far of personal funds into this project just because I wanted to do something special for the community on top of what we already have planned as well. So I'm always looking to just do what I can for the project. I'm not just going to use the project funds. I'm also going to use my own funds to continue to push the project because it's something I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about building communities and having a group of like-minded individuals and connecting with these people on a human level. I know yesterday we were on a VC and it was great. We had um, one of our guys in our community, Cryptic, he was there and he was showing us our, his hydroponics farm and we were connecting about sustainable agriculture. And I thought that was really neat. And this is, this is kind of the person I am. I'm interested in not only continuing to push in developments on the blockchain side of things, but also developments personally and creating connections with the unique individuals across the world within this space. As you know, as we all know, crypto is, it's such a diverse space and being able to connect with these people and form relationships, it's, it's truly invaluable. And that's, that's kind of the person I am as an, as a developer and just an individual in general, I always want to be inclusive of everybody. And that's what we're doing through the building up of wide variety of utilities, inclusive in the sense that we, we welcome everybody into our community and we work hard. We work hard. I'll tell you that. As you can see within the last five days, we got our utility out and that's, that's incredible. Five days in most projects aren't pushing utilities such as non KYC prepaid visa cards, such as we have. So we're, we're always working. There's been a lot of 18 hour days here. We'll tell you that some even some even kind of 22 hour days. But, you know, we keep working and that's what it's all about. It's about delivering to a group of people who are passionate and like minded. So that's kind of me as an individual. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Um, yeah, dude, 100 percent. Now, you mentioned that you were passionate about community and with a project like this community is extremely important it's the most crucial thing man so what steps are you taking to be able to build a community and after that i'm going to get into exactly what bmw inu does and what it is and who it's good for but let's start with the community aspect absolutely so building community we have regular fun competitions whether that's just profile picture competitions shilling competitions just talking with people in chat that's always something i love to do Talking on VC, we had our first VC last night because I've been so busy developing the utility. I've been in five-hour meetings with the teams like every day. Finally got a chance to connect with some people on VC, and that was fantastic. Furthermore, in terms of developing community, Twitter's been a great place where we've been developing a community. And we've been able to actually get responses from both CZ and BMW so far. And we're going to continue to kind of contact more influencers and, and fantastic people in this space as well. But that was achieved through community efforts. And I think we actually... This is something I wanted to mention. We had a competition to see who would get the first reply from BMW. We had a guy named Fantastic in our community. He got the reply from BMW. They said, thanks for sharing this beauty with a heart eye emoji. And we paid him a thousand bucks because we thought that was fantastic. So that was part of our competition. And we went through with that. I can share the TX stashes as well that was shared in the chat. But, you know, we, we have accountability as well with our community. So that's kind of how we build community. We take our values of accountability, transparency, integrity, and we, you know, we reflect those in our community and we continue to deliver on these values. So that's part of the um, community building not only comes in the form of building relationships with the community, sharing excitement. Some people love cars too. I know we have a plan to give away like an X3 at 250K market cap, you know, sharing that kind of love and the passion and enthusiasm for cars and, and things like that and building community, crypto, blockchain. There's a, we're, we're kind of at the crossroads of a variety of, different passions for different people, whether that's cars, blockchain, payment technology, et cetera. So we, we really get to share these these interests and passions with one another and create a really unique and special community that's very bright. That's very, very vibrant. Well, I'll I'll never hesitate to pay homage when homage is due. Um just talking to you, listening to you, hearing the things that you've done and what you've got going on. You sound like some successful. I appreciate that. You see, you can off there, brother. I think he'll be back pretty soon, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Man, you gotta love Telegram. Yeah, his Telegram might have crashed. Hope he'll be back. He's coming back. Yeah, I just saw him disconnect. There he is. Welcome yeah. back. What's up, man? Yeah, like what I was saying is you sound like devs I've talked to that have created sex successful projects. So, you know, I always give flowers when flowers are due. Um you're 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 passing so far to DC and that's what's up. So let's get into the project. So BMW Inu, 
what is it? What's the point of the project? And why should the people here invest in it? Most certainly. So BMW initially was created given the Binance partnership with BMW for their loyalty rewards program. But we have furthered our mission as we've created our roadmap, which essentially we're going to we're continuing to create our utilities, build the community, get the listing sites, et cetera. But more importantly, we're going to deliver on other utilities as well, not only with our payment technologies, with the prepaid visa cards, but eventually a play to earn game similar to that of Lux Racing. If you guys are familiar with that, something along those lines is kind of our end goal with the uh, play to earn game. But we also have a variety of other income sources and revenue sources that most projects don't have. So especially at this level, most projects do not have a source of revenue. We do. And it's a reoccurring source of revenue, which is our prepaid Visa card solution in which individuals anywhere beyond our community as well. We have a Telegram bot and a website that you're able to buy these prepaid Visa cards on non-KYC, by the way, which is fantastic. You're able to buy these cards and the project received the 1% fee on all of these cards that are bought. So now let's say someone buys a $2,500 prepaid Visa card, which a lot of people do, by the way, it's, it's pretty crazy. Actually, we end up getting $25, which is able to be put into the marketing wallet, bought back and burned in the project. So this is a, this is an incredible revenue source for the project, which is really sustainable. And it's going to be a long-term solution for this project in terms of building the chart and continuing to bring in revenue into the project, which is going to be brilliant. Furthermore, we're going to have some incredible partnerships, not only coming very soon but some coming today as well which is going to be great we're going to continue our ama campaign and we're going to continue to develop these utilities alongside a marketing push which is going to be coming soon that's going to be attacking our five main tenants and social media so we are going to develop a short form content strategy as i do um social media marketing by trade so pretty much for my social media marketing company i run a bunch of really really large instagram pages i get about 300 million views a month what i'm going to do is I'm going to take the strategy that I've developed over the last three and a half, four years of sort of short form content, and I'm going to apply this to the platforms, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, TikTok, and Pinterest. As once we create a piece of content, it's applicable to all of these realms, and we're able to kind of drive a lot of organic and targeted traffic. So for example, the beauty of TikTok, for example, is when you post a video about crypto, it reaches those people who take interest in crypto. And that's the beauty of short form content. And we're going to be able to target this on a geolocation basis. So that's going to be people who are, let's say we want to reach individual investors in the United States, we're able to do that. If we want to reach people in the UK, we can do that. So this is kind of the beauty of our strategy moving forward. And, and you're going to see this reflected in the continued growth in our holder account and uh, chart. Wow, that's dope, man. Got you, got you. So here's another question. How can people trust that you can put your all into this project if you run a company in two agencies? Most certainly. So I think this, this could be reflected not only in the time I've been putting in recently, I've been putting in 18 hour days. Actually, I just graduated from college as well. So I do have a lot of time now alongside my companies. A lot of my companies are on autopilot as well as I have as I have a variety of teams already working on the on the companies I own, and they kind of run that full time. It's kind of more a passive income endeavor for me. Um, in terms of putting in time, not only do I have to put in a lot of work, we also have an entire team of individuals. We have other partners, et cetera, who assist us in, a lot, in pretty much all aspects of our project development, marketing, et cetera. So we have a lot of we have a lot of people supporting us. So time on my end, of course, I'm going to put in. We've been putting in 12 plus hour days every single day and it's been fantastic and I love every moment of it. So it's not really an issue, but in terms of um, putting in time for the project, I don't foresee that being an issue and I'm going to continue to put in a lot of time into this project because it's something I'm incredibly passionate about and it's at the forefront of my mind currently. Man, I don't think anybody could have answered it better. That was a perfect answer. All right, then let's continue with BMW E! News. So who would you say, who you, what type of investor would you say would benefit from this project the most? You know, we got a lot of different people up in here. Some people have big, big wallets and have small wallets. Some people, you know, just different mindsets, attitudes. Who do you think would best fit this? And the reason I'm asked this is because I want them to be able to make the best decision. And then I want, I don't want people who would have invested here, not invest here because they didn't know it would be the best for them. So go ahead and tell us who this would be best for. Most certainly. I'd say it's a mid to long-term hold 
for someone who's interested in someone who's really willing to work. As you can see, our team's willing to work. We're willing to deliver. This is not some DGEN that's going to die in a couple of days, as you guys have seen. This is something we're willing to work on. We're willing to put up the money. Um, it's a project that's utility focused. We're going to continue to focus on utilities. We all know that BMW Inu eventually people are, you know, we can't use the name forever. So rebranding is it's going to be something in our future. I can't give a specific a specific timeline on that as I I don't want to give one just yet. But rebranding is something in our future. It's still going to remain um, based on the automotive theme alongside a focus on our payment technologies and play to earn racing game. But of course, these are things to consider. So it's we're looking for people who understand that these utilities take time. But also someone who understands that we've displayed that we are willing to put in the work and they're, you know, someone who's patient, but also is active. Most importantly, we want individuals who who want to take part in the community. Say hi and chat every day. If you if you had a great day, I want you to come and tell me I want to be excited with you. If you had a bad day, I want to be here to support you. So we're looking for investors who are engaged and understand that this is a longer term play. And this is something that we're going to develop over the course of the next the next couple months and years as time goes on. So that's those are kind of the investors we're looking for. Understood. Perfect. Perfect, man. So in terms of, okay, I don't no, I don't necessarily want to ask that. But, um, you know, just in terms of, you mentioned um, people can buy uh, Visa cards. So yes. here's the thing. Now, I already have my thoughts and opinion, which aren't negative. But can you explain to these people who may not know as much of me as me why that would be safe for them to do, especially with and now even though it's totally unrelated, like I said, a lot of people just don't have the knowledge we do. You know, people be seeing, you know, this collapse, this change goes down, this number two, they're in trouble, this is in trouble. So how can people trust um that they'll be able to buy those cards safely, you know, trust giving y'all the information and whatnot. Absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of how the cards work and whatnot, they're prepaid Visa gift cards, similar to that. Let's say you go to Walmart, let's say you go to a convenience store. These are very similar to the cards you buy there. Essentially our website, you don't have to connect your wallet, nothing along the lines of that, which is fantastic. Any information you give us is encrypted. And I personally do not have access to any of that information. That is just directly with Visa. We work with multiple banks and whatnot as well. We are not available in some countries as a result of regulation with specific banks. So I, I can send a list of the countries we're not available in uh, currently. And we're going to continue to work with regulators and whatnot to make that um, to make the those specific regions accessible for our, our utility. But in terms of how it works and, and safety, we are secure. Our website's secure. You can see everything's encrypted. We have access to none of the information. But furthermore, you don't have to connect your wallet. And when the funds are actually on the card, those funds cannot be touched. Those funds are just U.S. dollars or whatever currency you decide. So there's a plethora of currencies you can actually decide on, whether it's euros, pesos, zloty. If you're Polish, for example, there's several currencies. There's a whole list of them, and, and it's fantastic. But um, we can't essentially do anything to the cards once the card's there. It's, it's just there. We can't touch them. No one can really touch it. They do have expiration dates, of course, like gift cards do and kind of like a credit card does. Um, you can pretty much use the gift card anywhere. They are gift cards, so they don't have 3DS on them. If you guys are familiar, like it's not like a credit card. There is a slight difference. So certain individual, uh, certain individual payment processors may not be able to take them. Like, for example, we had someone who went to Chipotle the other day. They were able to buy some <laughs> some burritos with their gift cards and whatnot. We've had other people who have success with the gift cards as well. So. In terms of safety and security, we don't have access to any of those funds. It goes right through Visa, which is obviously a very large safe company. So that's kind of how the funds work. And in terms of safety, no funds are ever held on to by us. And they're just um, in the Visa cards. Which you can also buy with stable coins on a, on a, a wide network of um, blockchains. So you can, you can buy these gift cards not only with BUSD on the BEP20 chain. You can buy it with... Um, tether on tron you can buy it with tether on ethereum's network there's there's a whole list of blockchains so we want to make it incredibly accessible and this is going to enable us to do partnerships with other projects as well and have our telegram bot within their within their chat so we're, we're it's really going to open doors and kind of be 
a massive revenue stream for this project. Not only a revenue stream, but something that's going to raise awareness as people are going to see the BMW E new card spot and they're like, oh, what is this? You know, and they're going to take interest in our project and see the relationship and how it's going to benefit our project in the long term. Got you, man. Got you. Yeah. So, guys, just long story short, y'all, um, it's not their card. You're buying a Visa card, and they're just they're just the sponsors of that card, but they have nothing to do with it. They just have their brand on it. So, you guys are safe. Uh, I could have said that myself, but I wanted you guys to hear that from him just to give him more credibility and to build that trust and uh, and have the extra certainty. But uh, yeah, man, let's uh, let's talk about the marketing side of things really quickly. You know, well, now let's talk about let's talk about this right here. So, what are you guys doing to convey the message that this is not just some meme coin and it's just not some project that's going to be here for now and then gone later? Because everybody in this safe haven, hopefully from after action, they can clearly understand that that's not the case here. But everybody who's going to invest. Like it's eight people here. Most people who are investing don't know that. So how how are you communicating what this project really is and your true vision for it um, to the people, like in an upfront level, maybe through your website, maybe through VCs you have in the chat? How are you doing that? Absolutely. So through our bot, we have it every about every 15 minutes or so, our bots in the chat, making sure the utilities at the forefront, the payment utilities at the forefront. In terms of VCs, it's something we always discuss. It's something I'm always open to discuss about and always something I want to receive constructive feedback on. For example, someone mentioned, uh, mentioned that, do you know, like for the, like, the odometers or things like that or the talking meters, they wanted to see that instead of the little bar that we have. And that's something we can look to implement, too, in the future for, for increased branding aspect, for um, increased branding on their, our website. In terms of having the utility at the forefront of our marketing pushes, this is something that we're going to be working on. And actually, we're going to have a competition that we're releasing today in which we're going to have a utility-focused um, competition on social media with a one BNB prize for someone who uses our utility and displays that. So I'll get more into that later in my in my um, the main chat for BMW Inu, but you guys are going to be able to see that and take part in an awesome competition in which you can see the utility at the forefront of our focus of our next marketing push. This is also going to be seen with our AMA campaigns as we put the utility at the forefront. Um, we're going to have a lot more pinned messages in chat when we start doing some of the buybacks and some of the marketing pushes using the funds generated through our utility. So as we move forward here, you're going to begin to see that shift away from, oh, BMW and CZ just replied to this meme token. You're going to begin to see, wow, this is, oh, they have this, they have this utility and then another utility, which I'm not going to name, but I'm still working on. And then a P2E racing game, they're going to start, okay, wow, they're, they're doing more than just just spamming tweets like, oh, we're mooning, right? It's, it's going to have a sustainable form of income. This project is providing a use case. It's providing entertainment. It's providing a payment solution, right? And the people are going to begin to see this and say, wow, this project is a little bit more than just a, a simple DGEN that took two minutes to put together. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And speaking of marketing, let's let's jump on to the marketing side of things real quick with this. All right. So what is you got? Give me the scope of your marketing plan. Because we have everybody a talks, <laughs> oh, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Also, yeah, we do have a pretty broad marketing plan. At this point, we just began our AMA campaign today. You are the second um, AMA host for us. We just began two hours ago with Homer. We had a fantastic AMA there. So we want to begin our AMA campaign because I think we get to have, I think with AMAs, you get some informed investors who are interested in kind of learning more about the project. And it's a great means for exposure as well. Um, further marketing plans is going to be that social media push on those five main platforms that I spoke on earlier, the YouTube Shorts, Facebook, Instagram Reels, TikTok, and Pinterest. Those are going to be our five main platforms, alongside also working on platforms such as 9gag, 4chan, Stock, Twits, Twitter. These are all platforms that we're going to continue to work on and we have people working on. We have a massive team of people. Of seven, we actually had 70 people working on uh, tweet, on Twitter alone. So that was that was pretty cool. But um, moving forward too, we're really going to start developing a social, me like a social media presence because I think that's critical to um, displaying not only some, some form of um, trust in our project, but, you know, it's having those those numbers there. It does show that, you know, oh, this project is something. If we have 
you know, if you have 20 followers on Twitter, someone's going to ignore you. But maybe if you have a thousand followers, they, you know, it's that social proof that some people are looking for that we're going to continue to establish. And I have means for going viral using these platforms, which is going to assist greatly in our growth as well. So I look forward to kind of implementing some of these alongside the competitions. Further marketing as well. We have a partnership coming out today. We're going to continue to do more partnerships with influencers, but not only partnerships with influencers, but projects. We have a couple projects which we've already spoken with and we've agreed to do partnerships with both on chain in terms of um, uh, Binance Smart Chain and off chain in terms of Ethereum, et cetera. So we're going to have partnerships with other projects in which our bot is going to be in their chat. It's going to be essentially throwing out every so often, hey, these, this, these exist and you can take advantage of these. This is giving people the ability to access our payment technology, which is fantastic for us. So not only is it an income stream, but it's also going to allow people to see, whoa, what is this project that just gives us that added exposure? So for marketing, moving into some more hefty marketing, AMAs, larger partnerships, a uh, broader focus in terms of marketing to a larger audience, a global one at that. Got you. Hey, man, look, I'm in the process of DMing you right now about some stuff, man. So if you get a message right. from somebody, it is the real me, man. But, All right, uh, really? Yeah, this is going to be good. But um, anyhow, let me see. Yeah, so when it comes to when it comes to your marketing, how have you accounted for the language barrier? Language barrier, yes. Yeah, so our website, our website's currently under maintenance, but our website actually has a, a wide variety of languages. We have Mandarin, Turkish. French, Spanish, and a plethora of other languages. So that's that's fantastic. That allows us to be more inclusive and accessible, which is something we like to focus on. We're, we have a large focus on inclusivity and accessibility within our project. We have marketers to uh, cross language barriers. So CeeLo, he assisted with us in our Chinese marketing. MK, he's he speaks around five languages. M, it's, it's MK, bro. He's our marketer. Absolutely brilliant guy. He speaks a lot of languages. I only speak English, but he speaks a lot of languages. So that really improves our ability to access these different corners of the market. We have individuals who are Turkish as well, which is a massive market, by the way. The Turkish uh, crypto market is fantastic and it's massive and it's vibrant. So we continue to access that as well. We have some guys in our community who are Turkish. Alongside, we have some Spanish members of our community. So moving forward in terms of developing some chats, we're going to continue to look to develop our Chinese community, Turkish community, Spanish community, French community. These are some of the primary um, communities that we are going to look to develop moving forward here within our main group. And we're going to kind of branch off into these groups as well so that there's a sense of a greater community and kind of speaking, you know, speaking in your native language. It's just it's something that's unrivaled in terms of kind of building community and building trust. So that's something that we're going to look to continue to do. That's what's up, man. And in terms of marketing, man, so what is your target investor? Like when you created your style of marketing, who are you who are you targeting? What would your target investor be? Definitely someone with a longer term focus, mid to long term focus. Long term is I when I say long term, I mean years. Uh, we're looking for someone who believes in the utility, someone who wants to even use our utility, of course, as well, because we do offer a pretty unique utility and we're going to continue to develop more and more unique utilities as well. Um, we're looking for people who yeah, just really engaged individuals, people who maybe share love for automobiles, whether that's automobiles or maybe you like blockchain technology, payment technology. Maybe you're just looking for a great community. There's a there's several kind of personas that we're looking to market to, if you will. So that's kind of that's how we're going to approach our marketing. But definitely people who are interested in someone who's safe. We're safe. We're active. We're willing to be transparent. We're enthusiastic. And if that's something you enjoy, if you want a developer who's here in the chat speaking with you, enthusiastic about what we're doing, thoughtful, that that's that's kind of the person we're marketing to is someone who's interested in that. If you're looking for if you're looking for a quick 100x, this is not the place we're here to develop sustainable growth. We're looking to continue to push consistently over the next months and years as we move forward. So those are the kind of the um, investors that we're looking to access. All righty. That's what's up, man. That's good. And in terms of, so right now we are in bearish times. It's a bear market clearly, but we'll eventually be in a bull run. How are you going to be retaining people and maintaining a stable 
a stable process of having people join your community as we're going through these dips and as interest keeps going up and the price keeps dropping and people get more and more scared. So how are you going to weather those storms? Certainly. So it's always going to be through continuous work on the project. We have funds to weather the storm. That's for sure. We have a very fat marketing wallet. We've got personal funds that I have no problem throwing in. As I said, I've already thrown in 20 BNB. I have no problem helping people weather the storm. We also have that utility focus. This is not a project that's just, we're here for a meme. We're, you know, of course the name has, has some nice hype around it considering the partnership. But once again, we have, we have some fantastic utility and most projects don't have a utility that generates revenue. We can weather the storm as a result of that. So it's going to be fantastic. And I think moving forward here, people are going to begin to recognize that. And, you know, as time has progressed too, especially in BSC over the last year, what I've noticed is I think the sentiment is beginning to switch. People were just aping into every project before and they were seeing those returns. But now what's starting to happen is these devs who may be a little scummy, their projects are hitting one, two K and that's it. People are not believing in them at the, at the same kind of rate and whatnot that we've seen in the past, which is good. And I love this development. People are starting to look for safe communities with devs who are willing to work and people who want to put in the work and not only are willing to put in the work, but are actually achieving their goals. As we set out, we set out to make our utility. We achieved the goals in record time and we're going to continue to push like that. And I think as the bear market even deepens potentially or, or if it reverses, regardless of what happens, People are going to begin to see, we want someone like Chromed. We want someone who's putting in the work and, and delivering and being truthful and whatnot and not just making false claims and just coming up and not doing anything. Because oftentimes you see a lot of these projects, they say, oh, we're going to develop a utility and it never comes. Well, we've already developed the utility and we're going to continue to develop utilities. And I think that's what people want to see. And especially as we move forward, that's really going to be, I think, one of the primary reasons why people come into BMW, you know, is because they're going to see that we continue to deliver and you can't really beat that. Agreed, man. That's what's up, dude. Um, and then also financially, because, you know, you guys mentioned that you guys have a utility that generates revenue for you, but that utility, it really depends on the floor of your project. So, man, outside of those utilities, can you, yeah, because I don't want to just dig straight in your business, but can you no, tell us that assures us that you guys are financially prepared to let this project run, even if the utilities don't generate revenue like you think they would, we can be assured that y'all still have the financial means to be able to let this project go smoothly. Because me personally, I'd be looking at projects and I'm like, dude, like I like some of the devs how you be seeing, like you're not supposed to pay yourself out of the marketing wallet. The marketing <laughs> yeah. wallet marketing wallet you're supposed to pay yourself from your team wallet or maybe if you decided to invest in the pre-sale yourself hey look dev's got to eat too it's your project nothing wrong with that if you're around the business in real life you want to own some of it ain't nothing wrong with none of that i got no issue with it but you know a lot of debt a lot of projects will run out of money and the reason why you see a lot of projects fail for y'all who are listening and don't know this shit the reason why a lot of projects will fail is because or, or you know, you, they're unclear on the marketing. They don't talk about the marketing plan is because their marketing plan depends on how much you buy and fill up their marketing wallet. So what can you tell us that this is going to be financially stable enough to just run to the next bull run, you know? Yeah, most certainly. So for one, one thing I wanted to mention too, as you mentioned, a lot of these devs, they, they rely on crypto. Crypto is a hobby of mine. I don't rely on crypto. I have a plethora of other businesses across several industries. So when it comes to actually like worrying about funds and, oh, I need to pay myself on the marketing wallet, <laughs> crypto, crypto is not my primary source of income. So it's not, it's not a concern. It's a hobby of mine. It's something I love and it's a space I want to help improve. So that's in terms of that. I wanted to mention that and get that out there. In terms of effectively spending the marketing to assure the longevity of the project, this is something I really want to touch on too, because we have succeeded massively in this. We have taken our marketing wallet and we have continuously grown the marketing wallet. Of course, it's available on BSC Scan if you care to look at it and see how much is in there. We're doing all right. I'll put it that way. We're doing very well. And we continue to grow the marketing wallet, which is fantastic. And one of my biggest proponents as a developer and, and also a marketer, 
I want to ensure that every single dollar spent is going to have a positive ROI. And this is something we've succeeded in doing very well. And I foresee this continuing. If it's, if it's a weekend and it's completely dead on a Sunday night, I don't think that's going to be necessarily the greatest time to spend on the marketing. Monday morning, perhaps we'll see a little bit higher spend. You know, So we're, we are careful and we're concise with our movements. We, everything we do is very calculated in terms of marketing. We work with individuals who are going to give us the highest return. We take actions that we believe are going to yield the best results. And we have experience in the space as well. I mean, if you see some of the faces, we have connections across the space. As you can see, there's been no shortage of people who have called our project. There's no shortage of people who are willing to support our project. So we, so I mean, if anyone's been part of the community for a couple of days, you could see we are very, very well connected, not only in Telegram, but beyond Telegram, Twitter, et cetera. So you can see that we're going to do all right in terms of weathering the storm and the longevity of our project. I, I foresee it being, it's going to be very solid as we've continued to grow our marketing a lot, which a lot of, a lot of projects don't don't consistently do that, especially over a number of days and weeks, they struggle to maintain any kind of any kind of decent marketing wallet, but we've been able to grow our marketing wallet and that's through our connections and continuous uh, great decision making. Well, all right, that is as far as DC will take it. Chromed has done one of the best jobs of anybody who's ever been here. So it's been a pleasure hosting him and now let's let's throw it over to the community. All right, you guys put your hands up and ask him good questions. All right, let's start off with Victor. Victor, go ahead, man. What's up, bro? Go ahead. Um, so my question, Cromag, is um the whole idea about Oh, did he Oh, Victor, I can't hear you. I don't know if anyone else is able to hear you. Oh, you're back. I didn't hear you now. Yep. All right. So as I was saying that, um, the whole idea about BNW was created, first of all, based on the hype um, of the um, BMW and Binance partnership. So my question is, in the long run, we all know that. Um, not, that I'm, not that I'm diminishing your effort, but in the long run, the BMW will hype. Die off. So, what are your plans for rebranding? Do you have any plans for rebranding? Yeah, we do have some plans for rebranding. We've already spoken. Uh, we've had uh, detailed discussions with the team regarding the rebranding and whatnot. Because I, as are you, I'm aware of this issue as well. And we have some great plans for rebranding. It's going to be great. Um, I can't give a, an exact timeline on it yet because I don't want to release anything. Because of course, I want to hold myself. If I give a date, I want to be held accountable to that date. But we will have some more coming soon on the rebranding and whatnot and it's still going to it's still going to maintain the theme of kind of the automobiles and kind of it's going to include our payment technologies and our payment technologies are also going to be rebranded as well but in terms of that i don't want to give a timeline but yes it is happening and it's we're going to maintain this automobile theme because you know of course we do have the fighter and racing game which eventually we plan to develop and of course that's going to take time as well so like i said this is why we have the mid to long term kind of investment objective for in individuals who take interest in our project, but we will be rebranding eventually. It's just a matter of when, and I want to make sure when we do it, that it's done seamlessly and properly. Thanks for your answers and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate your question. Thank you, Victor. Good seeing you out here, man. Let me go and bring up, uh, man, there's a lot of hands up here. Jesus Christ. Okay. We will make it through this. Guys, one question per person. One question per person. All right. I mean that. Let's go ahead and get Peaceful Warrior up. Go ahead, man. Oh, he might not be able to talk. He might be able to just type. I, I spoke with him briefly earlier, so you might see his question pop up in the chat. All right, let's go down here to, oh, let's get Vlad. I see him. All right, Vlad, let's go ahead, man. Hit him up. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Hello. You know, because I have some network issues and stuff. So, yeah, hope you can hear me. If no, I'll just type my questions. But, yeah, just to begin with, first question I wanted to ask you was, why did you choose Visa over MasterCard? 
Uh, there, we just had the the infrastructure with Visa it was superior, and it's also seemingly available in more places. So that's why we decided with Visa. Oh, okay, yeah. So that was like a shorter question, but yeah. Uh, also, what I was like interested in uh, touching on that, because uh, if you want actually to issue a prepaid card, you have to, uh, you need to have your like bin uh, bin number registered and also get a license and have a registered company. So as I understand, you are being uh, like non regulated fintech here. So, uh, because you just did not get that license to issue a card, because you said those cards are issued by third-party banks and stuff. So, like, uh, what I wanted to ask, uh, how do you actually get in contact with the banks? And do you do that through Visa Partnership Program or something like that? Or do you just manually try to talk to banks and find partners to issue your cards in different countries? We work with another firm that's located in Canada that assists in our in kind of the whole process here and getting all the cards out. So we they have all the they have more connections with banks. They can get us in contact. It's all it's all based in a, it's a company in Canada that helps us run this. Oh, okay, yeah, that's great because uh, as I understand, yeah, if you want to issue cards yourself, as I said, you have to you need that bin bin number and also a license, exactly, Visa yeah. or Mastercard yeah. license, depending on who you work with. But also, like as I understand, if you still even if you're being like an unregulated fintech, you still need to have a, a registered company. Am I right on that, or you can actually issue cards without having a company registered? And if you don't have it yet, do you plan to register a company like uh, LCC or something like that? That that is in the future plans in terms of registering and whatnot. But we're doing it through uh, we're doing it through an agency. There, so there's currently no issues at all with that. Okay, yeah, that's great. And also touching on the card itself, because in my life I used multiple prepaid cards, like from. Uh, different issues and yeah what i'm really interested here is what is actually the limit per day because those can be really really difficult those can really differ from issue to issue and also uh, can you use the card to transfer the money to another card not prepaid one uh, and if yes what is the limit per day and per month to transfer the money Okay, so in terms of transferring balance, we do not have that ability because this isn't a 3DS card. Um, these are just simple virtual Visa prepaid gift cards. In terms of the balance, you can get any you can get one from anywhere from fifty dollars to twenty five hundred dollars. Currently, the limit's going to be raised, so per card it's twenty five hundred bucks. Um, in terms of using the card with Apple and Google Pay as well, that's currently available if you use a uh, United States or Canadian number as well. So that's something I wanted to mention. Otherwise, it's just used as a virtual card. So you can't necessarily use it in stores then. Hopefully that kind of answers those questions. But transferring balances is not possible at this time. Uh, we have plans, hopefully, to eventually expand onto physical cards that have KYCs. And that then those are going to have 100,000 plus dollar limits. And those are going to have the ability to take cash out, et cetera. Oh, okay, so actually, if I'm being outside Canada and U United States, I cannot add it to my Apple Pay, so I can only use the card to buy to buy stuff online, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so and as it's been a, a like a gift card because you know all the prepaid cards that you used previously, they actually had that limit per day I can spend. So using your car card, and if I, for example, buy a two thousand five hundred, so the maximum amount of money available, I can spend all that amount during one day. That's correct. Oh, okay. yeah, that's pretty interesting. So, like, I see, because, first of all, I saw that, like, regular 3DS prepaid, but, yeah, okay. So, I think uh, that's all from me, and I also, uh, actually, I had an, another question, but I think you already answered that before. I was interested in your future branding, if that's possible, but I think you already touched on it in yes. the middle of the AMA. So, yeah, thank you for thank your you time so and for your answers. No, I appreciate your questions. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Appreciate you, Vlad. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you too. All right, let's get to. All right, Ragnar, go ahead, man. Ask your question. Ragnar, your mic's on mute. You can go ahead, man.
Okay, so they did this at the, okay. Ragnar, your mic is unmuted. Go ahead. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My question is, uh, why did you decide to make the uh, prepaid visa cards and how are you uh, how are you willing to make people buy these cards? Yeah, so we decided I, I knew I had an opportunity to do so. It wasn't even part of the plan necessarily in terms of the roadmap to push forward. But I was like, well, I have I have some funds and I know people always look for utilities in a project. So I said, you know what? I think we want something with we want to generate revenue for this project. So I said, well, what better way to do it than implement a technology that a, that a lot of projects don't have access to. So, and I can also do it, I can afford to also have it at a lower rate than most people. So our fees are lower, so that's fantastic as well. So I figured let's do that, why not? And in terms of marketing the utility and whatnot, we're gonna have a competition coming out later today that's gonna incentivize use and marketing of the project on social media platforms. So that's gonna be fantastic. And I can't release too, too much about that, but it will be coming out today. Okay, right. Also, uh, does does it benefit the buyers in any way? I mean, the if someone buys your uh, visa payment cards, does it benefit him in any way? Does it benefit them? Yeah, I would say so. In the sense that you now have a, you have now taken your crypto and you now have fiat that's spendable. So I would say that is pretty beneficial. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, bro. Of course. All right, right. No, thanks for coming by here. Let's go ahead and get straight to one million. One million. Your mic's unmuted. You can go ahead now. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. All right. I have one question for you. I really appreciate your project and the way you designed your ecosystem, but I want to know. What has been the biggest challenge you faced in developing your project and how did you solve them? Most certainly. So the biggest issue that we ran into was implementing. So our utility is built on, it's built through an iframe and implementing that into our website was a challenge in the sense that when we implemented it into the website, we we're still kind of working on this as well. It's been a, it's been a challenge. So we, we put up a temporary website for the uh, cards and it still works just fine. But implementing it, the iframe into our website without having too many redirects. So otherwise, if currently when we try it out, it, it only works in some areas. But it has, there's challenges with like the DNSs continuing to propagate. If, if anyone knows anything about web stuff, like you know what I mean. But the DNSs just like propagate forever, like indefinitely. So we're just sorting that issue out. But currently the utility and everything's up. Um, we're going to return the website back to its uh, previous form without the utility and just leave the utility on a separate website until we sort out those DNS issues. So those, that was the biggest challenge we've had so far. Okay, that's fine because I really think the website is very important because all investors look forward to seeing your website. And then when w, BMW Inu faces a huge sell pressure, what are your plans to maintain price stability? Most certainly. So we have... Um, we have continuous buybacks that happen. We do burns as well. We've actually done around 2% already. So that's, that's been fantastic. We continue to have other marketing marketers who we, who we have scheduled and prepaid as well when things are, when things are necessary. So for example, we had a couple the other day, there was a little dip. We had that sorted out near instantly. So of course we always have things to cover. I think, let me, let me pull up the actual, hold up. Let me just make sure it was around around midnight around midnight one of these days recently we had a bit of a dip and we had people on that instantly sorting that out and we had some marketing and we flew right back up so we always have solutions when dips occur and whatnot and price stability is always a, a key and that's and that's, that's why when we move forward here we're going to see uh, our auto lp potentially increase in our taxes because currently our tax structure is nine nine so perhaps we're going to see a little bit lower well done well dipped on the marketing instead of having it 711 which is 7% marketing 1% lp 1% dev we're, we may have 6% marketing 2% lp 1% dev all right thank you very much i really appreciate best of luck to your project thank you so much have a great day yes have a great day 1 million all right let's go ahead and get mary up hello mary what is going on 
Mary, your mic is unmuted. Go ahead. All right, I got to put her back on. Mary, you can just go ahead and raise your hand back again when you're ready. All right, let's get Ray hand. Okay, Lucky, never mind. All right, let's get Lucky. Lucky, go ahead, man. Hello, can you hear me? We yeah, have hello. Hello. Okay, interesting. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Okay, so quickly, my question is um, regarding the uh, BMW in robots. So I want to know, um, in terms of malfunctions in the boat, how fast can the team like attend to it to make sure that um, there is no exploit in the boat and that the boat is safe for everyone to use? Yeah, so the bot being safe to use and everything, we, there are currently no exploits. We've tested the bot. Everything's in, All the information you add into the bot is encrypted as well. So the bot, the bot safety is... It's good, as well as when you're in the chat as well. We have the bot tagged so that there are no mistakes. If you want to confirm that using the correct bot, you can see that the bot is tagged and that people are not going to be clicking some random link by somebody. So those are kind of the measures we are taking in terms of uh, safety of the bot and whatnot. Okay, so in terms of, uh, as well know that nothing is assured, um, um, in terms of malfunctions in the boat, how fast can the developers or the team attend to it to make sure that it does not, uh, it is always like okay or always working well for users? Thank you. Most certainly. We have a team that works, actually, we have a full time team that works on that portion of the development of the bot. So the issues can be addressed very quickly and they work pretty much all day. So there's like, they, they do sleep, but there's a probably. 16 hour period if any issues are need or if, uh, if there's any issues within 16 hours or then 8 to 16 hours any issues can be resolved amazing uh, thank you very much uh, for answering my questions yep no worries thank you so much have a good one all righty next up let's go to hmm. Get Sir Trust. Okay, Sir Trust, your mic is unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question, sir. Thank you for the privilege. How was your day? Hope you are doing fine. Doing good, ma'am. Uh, so I just want to give some advice before I ask my question. As God that this project have done one audit report. I think the report should be uploaded to their BNC scan for more information to be there on their BNC. And uh, I believe this project based on the BMW hype in the first place. So if they are doing their rebranding, I think they should try to rebrand their name so that it will not be as a hindrance to them when they want to do maybe registration in the future, when this project become large project in the future. So going to my question, it's like some country are registered to use your card and I believe you are doing a no KYC utility for people. And this one should be available to the general community irrespective of their country. So what are you doing to make it accessible for those who are registered? I'm sorry, could you, could you repeat your question? You are using Visa card. Yes. Some country, um, some country are being restricted to use the visa card based on the rules they have in their country. So what are you doing to find an, an alternative way for them to make it generally accessible to everybody? Okay, yep. So I can actually, I'll shoot in a list. Let me, let me grab a list real quick. I have a list of the countries in which it's not available and currently. Give me one moment. I'll pull that up. But there are some countries in which it is not, it's restricted currently. Um, some of it we do have control over, some of it we don't. But in terms of making things a little bit more accessible to everybody, that's going to come in the form of our other utilities, which will also be very accessible to others as well. So we will have, we'll have more coming. But in terms of things with Visa, there's only so much I can do in terms of Sway. It is a, it's a multi-billion dollar corporation, so I really can't do too much and with governments and whatnot, but we can do our best to continue to try to make things accessible to the people who it is available to. 
Yeah, thank you. The reason why I asked that question for me, this want to be more accessible and for to get more exposure and have more investors. You need to find an alternative way for people mm -hmm. to have access to your utility. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. All righty, that's what's up, man. Appreciate you, Sir Trust. All righty. Let's go with Mary. Let's see if her mic works this time. All right, Mary, we're going to mute you, all right? Mary, your mic is unmuted. Go ahead, give it a shot. Hey, guys. Did you try and mute me before? I, I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm, I was here the whole time, and I still don't really understand the utilities other than this card and when i try to go into that card side uh, you pay 500 dollars no you pay 528 dollars and get 500 dollars why why would that be good or better for me than use my normal credit card okay so in terms of that there's a if, if you see on the website there's a little um scale thing so you can actually go back and forth to see what, what amount you'd like. So anywhere between 50 and $2,500. Yeah. The fee is just like any other fee. So for example, if you went to a convenience store or Walmart, for example, to get a Visa gift card, there's the activation fee. So our fee is three uh, three and a half percent plus $6. This enables you to take your crypto and also turn it into fiat and spendable currency. So this is that is what the form of this utility is. And that's kind of what it's for because not everyone has. But how do, I pay, how do I buy this card? Because if I click next now then, I have to fill out my city, my country, yep. my name, yep. everything. So once you fill that out and you hit next, what's going to happen is it prompts you to, it brings you to a page in which it has an address that you send it to, and then it gives you an amount. So you just, you take that amount, you type in that amount, you send it, send that amount to the address. It automatically detects the transaction going through. And then you are, then afterwards you get, receive an email with the card details. And it also shows the card details on the website if you want to just view it there. And then on the website as well, you'll be able to see a list of all the transactions that have occurred with the cards. So then I can go and use the card mainly That's, online then? Yep, mainly online. And then if you're in the U.S. and Canada, you're able to connect it to Google and Apple Pay. But yes, okay. it is a virtual Visa card, so it is but, online for now. So what are the other utilities on this card? So those are the, the – it's just like a Visa gift card. And then in terms of the utility for the project, it serves as a – continuous source of revenue for the project in terms of other utilities for the for the actual project itself we have other utilities coming uh one which i'm not going to speak on quite yet because i want to that's actually probably what's coming next and i want to that's kind of a surprise for the community and then the other one would be a club play earn racing game which is going to come out uh, and game is it yes a play to earn game so like uh so so it, what you're connecting with bmw and i would just want to say screw lambo let's go <laughs> so that's <laughs> we we did that based on the the partnership the recent partnership with uh bmw and their loyalty program and finance so that that was the inspiration there for the name in terms of that eventually we will be rebranding to just a, a more general automotive focused token so so you're gonna have more partnerships coming with different car brands then or um, in terms of car brands, not necessarily other partnerships with car brands, but in terms of partnerships with other projects and influencers, yes, we'll have more coming. But the focus of the project is just going to become a more general automotive focused project as we kind of phase it out and get into our rebranding. But just to be clear, I mean, right now you don't have any utility. The utilities are coming except for this card. Yeah, a that's a yeah. And that utility is live already. Okay. And and how do you see yourself? What do you see yourself like in three years? What's your vision? Because I can't find your web page. It's under maintenance. Yeah, it's under maintenance. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. So the website's under maintenance because we we're attempting to implement the the iframe, which the utility's under, and the website we're having some uh, DNS issues. But in terms of three years, I see ourselves as a leader in the payment space. I see us with a with a game, a play to earn game. We have some other utilities that are going to be coming soon, and I see us as a longer-term project. So that's kind of where I see us in the next three years. So, so the, uh, this card, you have to pay it with this token, this BMW. Not, not BMW, you know, you can pay it with um, a plethora of tokens. So if you look on the website, if you actually follow the information and go through, you can see that there's a variety of different tokens. You can pay it in BUSD BEP20, you can pay it in uh, US, USDT, 
on the Ethereum chain, Tron chain, Polygon. There's so many. There's like a ton of options. Okay, so, that, so it, everyone it makes it really you can accessible. use what all your cryptos you can use to buy yep. these cards and then yep, pay that's for correct. Okay. Yeah, but they're stable right, tokens. So if, as long as it's a stable token, it's probably available there. With okay. Dai, so, et cetera. Yeah, hurry up with the web page, please. <laughs> yes, yeah, we're working on that. We're trying to. We're going to return it to. The plans for the website now, we're going to return it to its original form minus the utility on there because the utility is available through the Telegram bot and that, ex- that external website. And we're just going to return the BMW Inu just to a, the regular project website with the utility outside of it. So why the name? BMW Inu because of the partnership with Binance and BMW. That was the inspiration initially. Okay. All right. Cool. Yep. Thank you so much. Yep. No worries. Thank you, DC. I- I also did want to mention, too, that we we did get a tweet back. We got a reply from uh, BMW as well. They said, thanks for sharing this beauty with hard eyes. Alongside CZ also repeated uh, replied to one of our tweets. So that has been pretty cool. Absolutely. Yep. Projects like that, like I always say, the core thing about a project is the community and the team behind it. You know, um, you could have great utility, poor utility, no utility. But if the community and team is there, What's up? You got, it's all about the community and team and these people in that area. But nonetheless, great interaction, great question. Uh, Mary, now let's continue. Let's see. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, boom. Let's go. Mary Jane. Ding, 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 ding. All right, Mary Jane, go ahead. There was this guy from a talent show he was in yesterday, and that mug oh, started no, no. writing a poem about Mary. That mug. <laughs> I don't know what he was talking about. Yeah. All right, Mary, go ahead. What's up? Thanks very much for the opportunity. I really appreciate You know, I was really paying attention. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. I said I was really paying attention to all the answers and it was really understandable. The project is really impressive. But there's actually somewhere I really want to understand very well. You know, as what you just said, not quite long, you guys have community support. And, you know, community support is one of the biggest aspects of a project success. And most projects have programs that interact with their users. So what are your specific plans to attract or expand the community and improve your user's experience on this stuff like this? And <clears throat> do you understand my question? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of expanding the community... So your... Oh, what's up? Okay. I was about to ask the second one. Okay. okay let, should I, do you understand the first part of yep, my question? Yep. yep, I understand the first part. So I want to also good. know, and does your current project take into account in various inputs and demands of your community? I would like to know that aspect. For the second question, I just want to ensure that I'm understanding it properly. Are you looking to find out what the what I believe the community is looking for? Yes. Do you, as in your current project, does it take into account the various inputs? And demands oh, okay, of yep. your yeah, most certainly. So to answer the first question, I'll go. I'll go in order here. In terms of expanding the community and whatnot, we have a great competition that's going to come up today, which is going to actually utilize the utility and have people use that live. So that's going to put, as I mentioned earlier, as we want to continue our marketing campaign, but have the utilities at the forefront of that. This competition is going to be a one BNB competition that's going to put the utility at the forefront. Now, in terms of Expanding the community as well. We're going to have continuous partnerships, marketing, social media marketing that's going to continue to push this project out to the masses. In terms of actually having community and their the community and their input be taken in and actually utilized and and kind of create you know create changes based on what the community loves and what they want. Absolutely, that's something we look to continue to do here. We had a VC last night. Just got to meet with the community a little bit, speak with them. I am a massive proponent of getting constructive feedback and not only taking that but implementing it. So as we continue to move forward here, if the community has something they want to see, I'm all for implementing it and doing what I can to actually make that a reality. So that's something that's always at the forefront of my mind. If, if the community would like me to do something, if they want more AMAs, for example, we'll run more AMAs. It's, it's always about what the community wants, and I'm going to 
do my best to deliver that and in a reasonable time frame as well so for example like if you wanted a p2a game tomorrow i probably couldn't do that but of course as long as the demands are reasonable i can most definitely do my best to to actually get things done in a reasonable amount of time mm, that makes sense and that's very impressive cheers to you i really appreciate it and i wish you the best thank you so much enjoy the rest thank of your day all righty thank you mary jane now rayhan let's see you Rayhan, go ahead. That'd be good too. Hey, this is. Can you hear me? Yeah, man, yep, we got uh, you, bro. Okay, my question is: uh, You have mentioned that there are a uh, hundred of uh, countries that are restricted uh, in your token or visa. So uh, I have found that there are uh, many big, big crypto countries are restricted, like China, Africa. So how do you uh, think that you will uh, survive in the uh, uh, in the crypto market? And uh, do you have any uh, plan to uh, uh, plan to uh, increase or unrestricted those countries? I'm not capable of necessarily undoing those restrictions, as those are just with the banks, the inter- with the banks and the way they work internationally. So that's those countries for the most part is out of my control. Moving forward, though, in terms of being inclusive and allowing accessibility to our future utilities, that's something that's going to be totally be possible with utilities that are just um, like on the blockchain and, and nowhere else. I mean, the visa, um, the visa utilities off blockchain. So, of course, there's going to we always can run into hurdles there. But with on chain utilities such as NFTs alongside other potential utilities, that's going to be where we can have everybody access these utilities with the play to earn racing game there's not going to be these barriers to entry that are out of our control so that's that's kind of how we're going to move forward with that but uh, there are lots of countries uh, are restricted that's why i'm said it's uh, a little bit tough to survive okay thanks for the opportunity that that's my question only okay thank you All righty, uh, let me see. Good, right hand. That was good. You did not disappoint me. All right, let's go to Sir Justino. He's been waiting. All right, Sir Justino, go ahead and ask your question. Sir Justino, your mic is unmuted. You can go ahead. All righty. Bucks, Matt, go ahead. Your mic is unmuted. Let's see it. Bucks, Matt, your mic is unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Um, I just want to ask if this is correct. Um, when when we try to load up the card, you can use it in, in the real world, right? I'm sorry? If we load up the card by the use of the crypto you can use it on the real world yes that's correct you can use it and it's going to be available um, in your fiat currency so for example if i ordered a 50 dollars prepaid visa card and i decided to put it up with us dollars it's going to be useful and you can use it on for me because i'm in the united states i'm able to use it in i'm able to use it with apple and google pay and i'm also able to use it anywhere virtually as are you if you're if you're not located in one of the restricted regions you're able to utilize it anywhere on the internet with the currency of choice. So for example, if you wanted pesos, you can use it with pesos. If you want it with Zloty, if you're Polish, you can do that, et cetera. Uh-huh. Um, so can we also use it um, to pay, for example, on the fast food chains? Uh, I'm sorry? Can we also use it on uh, to pay f- um, food or when we eat on fast food chains? Yeah, actually, we just had somebody the other day who got a prepaid card. He sent a video of him getting Chipotle with it. He went to Chipotle fast food chain, so you can you can get you can get fast food chain. You get a lot of food, so that's kind of the beauty of the card. Um, especially if you live in these regions in which you're able to use it, the Apple and Google Pay, you can actually go into the store and do that. Otherwise, you're going to have to do that online, and then probably go pick it up. Um, so McDonald's, McDonald's and Jollibee will be available, right? Yeah, as long as you pay online and pick up if you're not available for the um, Google and Apple Pay, yes. 
Okay, yeah. it's, just, it's just like a Visa gift card. Yep, no worries. That's all DC can you. Well, yeah, man, you're welcome, dude. Very welcome. Thank you, sir. All right, let's go ahead and get Jake. Jake, go ahead, sir. What's up, man? Hello, thank you for this opportunity. Okay, so my question was on the card and the amounts you can, the maximum amounts you can deposit on your card. And I just wanted to ask about the fee system. Is there a fixed amount like on the fees? like a fixed amount, let's say maybe $20 on each and every transaction, or are the fees like based on the amount you want to like purchase, the amount of your card, let's say you purchase $2,500, maybe 10% on each purchase depending on the amount or how is the fee done or is it a fixed amount of fees? Okay, so when you're activating the card, there's a three and a half plus six dollar fee. So three and a half percent plus six dollar fee is to activate. And in terms of actually when you're spending, there's no fees when you're spending. It's just like a gift card. So if when you have a gift card, you're not charged a fee every single time. Um, and to load up the amount, you can load up any amount onto the gift card between fifty and twenty five hundred dollars. And you can either pay with the fee or you can have the fee included in the balance. So you can see that on the website and test the different um, options, whatever whatever works best for you. Oh, all right. And the maximum amount, you know, a lot of people deal with maybe higher amounts, like $5,000, $10,000. Is there any plan like to increase the maximum amounts or will it just be fixed there for a while? Yes, the next the maximum amount will be increased. I'm not going to say the exact amount, but it will be increased within the next week or two. Actually, we do have the ability to do that, so we will be increasing it. All right, and the um visa card. Will there be any plans like to maybe like get a physical card, or you know? Yes. Maybe- Yep, in the future yep. we have the ability. To, we actually have that ability right now. It's just it's very very costly. So as time moves, as time progresses here, we're going to be able to get potential um, physical cards with high limits of like hundred fifty thousand dollars plus. But they will require KYC. They'll be fully branded out as well, and there will be a shipping fee. It's going to be a reasonably high shipping fee because every single one is made in house. Every single one is branded. It's a it's a smaller scale operation, so it's not going to be necessarily cheap. It's going to be like twenty twenty five bucks to ship it out, but that is something that is going to potentially come with the future too as we move into doing physical cards. Okay, and also would there be like a way we can customize our cards directly from you guys? I'll have to get back to you on that once I learn a little bit more about what it takes to do the physical cards. I believe it will just have a singular branded image on it. I don't believe there's going to be immense custom ability beyond that but i think that's kind of what we offer for now we're just working on the virtual for now and then potential plans to expand into the physical if the demand is there all right all right all good and one more question um can you explain to me how a visa card which also gives you access to use on many other popular applications google pay etc how it's run like on no KYC at all. Like how does that work? How is that working? Can you repeat the question, please? Okay, your utility is a non visa gift card enable system, right? Like how yes. does it work? Like how why is there no KYC and how does it work without KYC and We can also use it on Google Pay and many other places like that. Uh, It's not KYC. It's just just a gift card. 
So if you were to go to into a convenience store, like, or if you're going to go to walk into a Walmart or a Target, let's say, like, you wouldn't need to KYC to buy a gift card. So it's kind of the same way. That that's why there's no need for a KYC. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. No worries. All righty. Thank you for coming out, Jake. All right, you guys, it's 12. It. We've been here for an hour and 18 minutes. All right. Now, we still got about 10 hands up. So this is how we're going to do it. And we got to get a few people out the comments, too. All right. This is how we're going to do it. And pay attention to me closely. From this point on, I was lenient. But now, since we're getting towards the end, we're going to do one question per person. All right. Now, if any of you in here asks another question after you've already asked one question, and I'm not talking about talking about the point that, you know, you ask him about the marketing and, you know, he answers you and then you say, okay, is that North Korea or South Korea? Like, that's cool. I'm talking about you have one question and then we're going to talk about this and then that. If you do that, I'm going to cut you off. And I'm going to mute you. I'm going to embarrass you and all these people, okay? So you guys make sure you follow my instructions. One question per person, all right? Now let's go to Bigo. All right, Bigo, there you go, brother. Your mic is unmuted. Let's go. Oh, uh, got you me? Yes. Okay, so first of all, if I move into my question, I just want to say, Thanks for giving me the great opportunity. So let me just go straight to my question. So um, I would like to know um, what kind of relationship you have um, with the team members and what's your experience when it comes to building new projects. I don't know. I don't really need to get that question. Can Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry, I didn't really understand you. I apologize. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I said um, I would like to know um, what kind of relationship you have with the team members and what's your experience when it comes to building new projects. Got the question now? Um, DC, would you be able to like? Uh, I just want to make sure I'm understanding him properly. I I, I apologize. I'm a little bit of like, trouble. Uh, like I mean um, um, I would like to know what kind of relationship you have um with the team the team members and what's your experience when it comes to building um, new projects okay so what okay so in terms of my relationship with the team we have a fantastic relationship i've known a lot of the team for years uh, moving forward too we're going to continue to develop relationships with other other teams etc the relationship with your holders okay uh, okay so in terms of the relationship with my holders we continue to develop that through consistent vcs and whatnot and continuing to interact with the community in terms of developing relationships with the team members and whatnot. We've been able to develop that through work over the past few years. And then on your question about uh, project development experience, I've had around six, seven years of project development experience. So we've been, we've been doing very well over the past few years in developing and learning. Thank you so much for your question. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, I don't know if there's time for me to ask one more question this year, or maybe she does move on. I think everyone's had. I think everyone has one question. I apologize. If you if you have any questions, though, feel free to ask in yeah. my chat in the BMW chat or the BMW. It's chat. one question. It's, it's one question. Um, I, I made myself clear, guys. Guys, no. In all seriousness, for real though, ask one question. I mean that. All right, sniper guy, you go ahead, brother. What's up, man? Hello. I'm audible. Hello. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I just want to know. So, I would like to know how feasible is your project to change quickly and keep pace with technology trends? And also, what is your long term vision for the forecasting industry in which the project on press? Alright, well, I'll answer. I'll answer the one question because I know we're only supposed to ask one question. But in terms of um, keeping up with the technological change, we're going to be consistently be able to do that as we have plans for multi-chain. We have plans to continue with marketing 
we're going to continue to update our utilities and kind of revamp our utilities over time as technology changes and as we have access to further development. I appreciate your time and your question. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Thanks, All righty. Let's go to Yellow LIP. All right, Yellow, go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. Ask your question. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yep, go ahead, sir. Okay, thanks for the opportunity, brother. Um, This is a great project. I'll say you guys have been saying it quite a while and love the vision into the project. This is amazing. Um, Basically, I just want to ask about the video based on this project because, you know, this project is a project that more people want to be involved in it and you will have more investors and more people outside the crypto space which want to be involved in this project but basically they might not like understand what the project is basically all about you know and i don't know if you guys this is also like a suggestion so so i don't know if you guys would also be working on let's say having an educational videos you know these videos is not just a random video that most projects do this is a video that you know you'll be talking about your project saying what your project is all about, telling us what the project is going to do and what the project vision is all about. You know, you can also like put in these videos in also in different languages. And, you know, when you put in the video also in English, doing it in China, doing it in French, doing it in Indonesia, Africa, different languages, and, you know, posting it in different social media like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and, you know, you attract more people who are not in the crypto space you attract them to come to the crypto space and you know they'll fall in love with the project and they'll love what the project is all about because they know that basically this project is a global project and this project is going to be a great one and you know they'll invite more people to come into the project invite friends invite the family and the project will all about the crypto space and the project will also be successful so i don't know if you guys are working on that thank you Yeah, we're continuing to work on that and making it more accessible for other communities across the world through different languages, Turkish, Chinese, Spanish, French, etc. So we're going to continue to work on that in terms of having people come from other outside of crypto and whatnot and conveying our our mission and our vision. We're going to do that through um, different videos, etc. We have some viral videos that we are going to be releasing very soon regarding utility and some really neat uses of it and kind of how we impact communities. So I think that'll be a means of doing that. Okay, thank you so much for the answers. I really yep. appreciate the answers. Thank you, CJ. Thank you so much. Absolutely. No problem, dude. All right, let's go over to PCI. PCI, what's up, man? Go ahead. Where'd he go? Okay, there it goes. Hey. All right, go ahead, man. Hello. Thank, thank you, DC. Um, yeah, so... Uh, because this this is a long term project, um, this is you know related to a loyalty program of uh, from BMW. Uh, you know the BMW chain has happened before to, uh, that they take back these programs that they integrate, and this is really important because it could affect you know the course of the project. Uh, so what if they take back the BMW program from their chain? How will you be prepared for that in case it happens? And yes, I know you mentioned before that you are thinking to rebrand in the future, and it's a matter of when. Uh, but what if it happens in the next week or month? You never know in this space, and you know it could affect that's dr- drastically uh, the price, um, even more this market that we are right now. Yeah, most certainly. So I'd say that even if they were to take it back, all publicity is usually good publicity. So that that'll still bring eyes onto the project, and that's going to enable us to have a lot of news and buzz about us, which is going to really. If you look up BMW, and you, you're actually able to see there's a lot of articles and whatnot about our project. There's lots of websites that have it. We have very good at, um, SEO and whatnot. So even if they were to take it back with our rebranding, it's actually, it w- I would argue it could even be favorable in terms of having just more exposure to the project. So I, I wouldn't, I'm not, I wouldn't say it'd be such a bad thing given we will be rebranding pretty soon and whatnot. Sure. Um, this, this is not a question. This is more of a tip. Uh, I, I, I know you like, uh, you are, DM him. Yes, yeah, you can always reach out to me. If you guys have tips or other questions as well, you can always feel free to DM me because I want to ensure, I want to be respectful of DC, Dumbledore, and Achilles. It's time and whatnot. Thank you, DC. DC. Yeah, I appreciate it. 
announcers. Thanks for coming out, big dog. All right, let's go next to let's see if Sir Justino's mic is working now. Sir Justino, go ahead, man. Let's see what you got. Sir Justino, let's see what you got. Your mic is unmuted. All righty. Let's go with Falcon Rio. Falcon, go ahead, brother. Uh, hey, DC. Hey, Achilles. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Yeah, my question is, uh, if this is a long-term project, uh, it's about the contract. Uh, the contract contains the trade enable and disable function, and it is not renounced yet. So, uh, I want to know that uh, how can we trust this? Uh, I'm KYC'd, and the contract's audited. So no, no, there's... I'm t- I'm oh, telling, I know, I know, I'm I telling about like uh, the if, contract. Uh, I know. Uh, yeah, I was gonna get into my answer. Um. In terms of actually in that function, there will be no renouncing of our contract as I don't see any benefit to that. We actually end up clearing out the stuck balance and adding that to our balance. So through announcing, we'd actually, the product would be losing out on potential marketing money, which we've been using. So mm-hmm. it, would, it wouldn't be favorable for the product to renounce. Also, we do have occasional gassed up um, tax events in which the buy tax goes down to 2%. So if we renounce the contract, we wouldn't be able to give people an entry like that. So we are not planning on renouncing the contract. No, no, I was not talking about the changing the taxes or uh, something like that. I'm, I was talking about like, uh, like listing on the uh, exchange, uh, extra. Oh, in terms of exchanges. Yeah, yeah, they will cause the problem. I think we'll be okay in terms of listing on exchanges because I know other individuals who use this contract as well, and they've had no issues listing on exchanges. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. No nope, worries. Appreciate you, Falcon. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's get uh, Zuel Commander. Zuel, what's up, man? Go ahead with your question. Zuel, there you go. Zuel, your mic is unmuted. Three, two, and one. All right. We got to go on. All right. Ushjan. There you go, buddy. Your mic is unmuted. Uh, <clears throat> yo, guys. Yo, Kwamt. Um, You're killing it, buddy. Um, you so, so I have w- one question, guys. Um, with all the, you know, all the regulations and stuff um, uh, going on with uh, centralized um, um, exchanges and, like, you know, bringing crypto into fiat, um, my question is, uh, with this uh, prepaid um, Visa card, will it be uh, a solution for paying taxes, like avoiding paying taxes? Um, I don't know. This is not because as, this is not a solution for doing that. <laughs> that whatsoever. Fuck, just, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are okay, just like, okay. this is just, it's just like going to the store and getting a Walmart and going to like a Walmart and just buying a gift card. That's that's kind of what it serves the purpose as if that's something you're interested in doing. And what you do with it has nothing to do with me. I simply serve as an intermediary that allows for this um, to take place. So what you decide to do with it is it's not it's not in my it's not in my business to be fair. But yeah. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for your time. Yep, no and I appreciate your patience. No, of course. Absolutely. Great question, man. Thanks. All right, let's go to Eat It Daniels. All right, Eat It, go ahead. Your mic is unmuted. Eat It, your mic is unmuted. You can go ahead and ask your question. Three, two, and one. Hello. All right, go ahead. Okay, okay. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I was just going through your Twitter and I see that the Twitter account was open um since um since August if I'm not wrong. So uh while the Binance uh, partnership with BMW happened um a few days ago. Uh, so I just want to know um just explained uh, maybe let me explain better 
uh, let me understand better and also how you encourage people to buy their uh, crypto prepaid card uh, through your platform we're going to encourage people to buy their uh, crypto prepaid card through um through having uh, different competitions and kind of some social media marketing incentives that we're going to be setting up starting today and in terms of the twitter account being live it's just it's just a twitter account i had so i figured it's live why not use it Okay, okay, thank you. Yep, no worries. That's what's up, man. All righty. Next, let's get Bishop. Bishop in the building. Let's go ahead, Bishop. Bishop, your mic is unmuted. You can go ahead and ask your question. Three, two. I hear. Goes. Okay. So my question is, you know, most investors... Most of the new investors only focus on the price. Most of tokens and such terms benefit of the project rather than understanding the true value of the project. So can you just tell me about the motivation and the benefit for the investor to hold your token long? To hold their token for the long term, there's a variety of benefits, including we have the, the revenue stream. You have a community that's going to continue to work on the project. And you have a team that's going to continue to work on the project. So those are what we're going to continue to bring in. And through and through our continued work and revenue buybacks and marketing, you will likely see price. You're going to see that price appreciation, which you're looking for. So, okay, thank you. Yep. All righty. Appreciate you, Bishop. That's what's up, man. All right, let's go to Daniel. Daniel Noah, your mic is unmuted. Go ahead. All right, good evening, guys. Good evening. My, my question is from my experience that other um, other projects have been in. The charts, as in the projects, who usually um, spoil the charts are the teams when they sell their tokens or airdrops. So I want to ask, is there any way or is there any team reward so that your team can't um, won't be able to sell and ruin the charts? to cause panic sale of the investors. The team doesn't have any tokens, so that's not a concern. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks. Yep, no worries. All righty, Daniel. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming out. Let's get straight to ABF. ABF, what is up, man? Go ahead and ask your question. Oh, can you hear me? We got yep. you. All right. So, um, the question is straight. I again heard you mention your partnership. So, I was wondering, do you have some external partners who invest in this project? And what is the reward? I mean, what percentage from your revenue is there is any of that? And then, in the long run, would you be open to accept more partners who would invest in the project and then have one or two percentage from your revenue? Or you just have to work with your team. Um, DC, do you, did you get the question? Man, he just wanted to know about your partnerships and what you put. Okay. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So in terms of partnerships, we're going to have a variety of multi-chain partnerships, both on BSC and beyond. We have partnerships with projects that we're forming and, and influencers so that'll be coming very soon. We should have a partnership with an influencer coming today or tomorrow. And in terms of partnerships with other projects, we'll be starting that very, very soon. And you'll see that, that BMW Inu Cards bot will be in the chats and you'll be seeing that. And that's going to be a means for revenue generation as well. So what's going to be the percentage for your partners or you're just going to do it for for you and they don't have anything to benefit from the partnership. Do I'm just trying to understand your question. I apologize. Um, I, I believe what you're asking is how it's a symbiotic relationship between both partners. Yeah, they're going to be yeah. they're gaining access to a utility and it's going to be available to them. And then we gain exposures and and um, profit sharing. So their their community gets access to a fantastic utility and they get access to exposure, and then we also get ex- access to the same exposure, et cetera. So, and we also get revenue for our project. So it's it's kind of, it works symbiotically in that nature. All right. Thank you. For your answer. Yep. No worries. All right. 
All right, Ripper, I can't scroll up for comments to get anybody in the comments because TG is just acting weird now. But Ripper, we will let you be the last person from the VC. All righty, Ripper, you're up. Go ahead. Guys, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Uh, so this one, no, I don't know if this has been touched on, but regarding a, a very nice project like this, it will require a huge amount of marketing power and advertisements. So I just want to know, is the team really financially stable to, you know, have a good marketing power? If you understand my question. Yeah, we covered a lot of this in the AMA already. We have a significant amount in the marketing wallet. We have continued push that we're going to do with uh, social media marketing, etc. Um, yeah, we, a lot of this has already been covered in the AMA. Okay, okay. Thanks, man. Yep, no worries. I appreciate you, sir. And without further ado, that concludes the AMA. So let's go ahead and get to the giveaway. All righty. So the first question is this. Well, let me do the bur- I got to do the best question first. I'm sorry. All right. So for the best question goes to Mary. So, Mary, you are the winner of the best question. Uh, yeah, I always got to remind people, make sure you stay here in the chat after you ask the question because we're not going to be chasing anybody. Okay, so if you ask a question, make sure you stay in and see if you want or not. All right, so let me go ahead and get Mary right over to Dumbledore real quick. So, Dumbledore, let's get Mary. Boom, and that's point two to her. Now we got to go to the trivia question. So the first trivia question is, now you guys know the rules, and you know you know I don't play, okay? Make sure that when you answer the trivia question, you, you, you answer it after I type it in the comments. So even if I happen to say it out loud, it doesn't count until it's in the comments. And if you start spamming answers before I... Before I drop it in the comments, it doesn't count even if you got it right. All right, so let's go ahead. All right, boom, here we go. The question is dropping in one, two, three, four, five. Everybody look at the comments if you want to win the trivia. One, two, and three. What debit card holder is BMW Inu partnered with? All righty. All righty. Let's do. Let's scroll up. Okay. Dumbledore, can you mute the chat, please? Um, unfortunately, I do not know. Oh, I should have asked Achilles how he did that last time. <clears throat> yeah, put the thirty. Uh, put the thirty-second timer on. So I'll scroll up and get the winner. Um, prepaid Visa card, correct? Yep, it's Visa. ECI, wow. you are the winner, sir. Wait, wait a second. 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 Um. So the thing about it is, is when he, that's one thing I wanted to point out right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I wanted to call out. Okay. So OGs. Oh, you just broke up, brother. Because you typed out a bunch of sentences and put Visa in there. That, That was slick. So you didn't actually win. So it would go to PCI. All right. It goes to PCI. Guys, guys, when I say operate with integrity, we, we really mean it. All right. So let's go to next question. Oh, my God. My telegram is... Wow, that is so weird. Okay, so I'm going to have to say this out loud. 
So this is the one time my rule doesn't count, okay? So guys, what were the two important shout outs that BMW Enu received? All right, Catch got it. Yes, sir. Catch got it. Nice one. Yep. All right, and that concludes our trivia. You already got PCI. So I got it. Yeah, just give me Mary's because... All right, that's the end of the uh, trivia. Now let's go to next question. Um, no, you don't DM double Dumbledore. I got it. Okay, so um, no, go ahead and DM me. I'm actually on TG. Yeah, I already I DM. Not even I'm there, I'm there. Maximum security. So, so, all right. Yeah, 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 go ahead and shoot me a DM. Also, guys, please send me your wallet. And if your wallet, I've already sent you money before, and you know I have your wallet. Don't wait till I send you the money twenty minutes later, and then tell me right away. Oh, I changed my wallet. Like that's getting old, and that also cost me money recently. So, just please, if you have a wallet in my DMs, and you know you just won, go ahead and change that wallet now. Delete it, but do please update and send me that, and I will send you your money. All righty. So next question. All righty, here we go. I'm thinking number between one and ten. What is it? Paul, oh, what could it be? All right. One million got it. <laughs> all righty. So that's all the winners. They've all been sent out. Wait for Dumbledore for your payments. And yes, yes, that is the conclusion of the. Wait a second. Hey, Mary, did you have anything to say? She just all right. Well, I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. You're welcome. All righty, so. Chrome Ed, thank you so much for coming here. You have been a fantastic guest. I DM'd you. Let's make some stuff happen. Um, but other than that, yeah, this has been uh, Double D, DC Dumbledore over at the QE Safe Haven. Shout out to everybody up here right now. And Safe Haven, we are out and we'll be back Saturday. See yes, you sir. all later. Later, guys. Brilliant. Thank you, guys.